VT LS1 wagon. This is a 2000 model, so this has got the um, the first LS1 in it. So it's got the 853 cylinder heads and then the smaller intake manifold. So this one's come in for one of our head and cam packages. Um, and we've got the, the aluminium plastic, oh, sorry, we've got the aluminium OTR on it. So a few things with this model car, which is different and unique from say like your LS6 style LS1. So the inlet manifold on these is smaller. So they've got a smaller rudder, uh, much, much smaller plenum. And then they've got also the eight five three cylinder heads, which is the smaller cylinder heads as well. Now, when they get ported, so Blackwell uh, Cylinder Heads, who does all our cylinder heads and machining as well, um, he can turn these cylinder heads into a two. So once you port these cylinder heads, they're the same as a 241 ported as well. So even though the heads start off as a smaller cylinder head, once CNC ported, they're the same as the 241s. However, the inlet manifold is still small. So a couple of good things about the smaller manifold is it does give you better bottom end torque and better throttle response off the bottom. However, in the top end, it chokes up. So the power of this car is going to be a little bit less than what we traditionally would do, but a good upgrade now for this customer would be to put the LS6 uh, inlet manifold on it, which is a, a completely direct fit. You can just bolt it straight on and away it goes. And if I have one sitting here on the shelf, I would actually throw one on it now and do a test. But you know, over the years of accumulating parts, we threw a lot of that stuff out and now it's all becoming scarce. I wish we never did. So um, whoever got all their scraps, you know, they done well. So we've thrown out so many of these manifolds and on a day like today, I would have given it to the customer. It would have made another probably 15 or 18 kilowatts and happy days for everybody. So um, a couple other things with the VT to take note of too is with the aluminium OTR, this is all you can use in this model. You cannot use the plastic VCM one that does go down down through here and in front of the radiator. Um, just the positioning of the radiator and AC uh, makes that an issue. So if you don't have the AC in there, you can definitely use it, but you cannot in this case. So if you do have a VT and you do want to put an OTR on it, you need to go with the aluminium VCM one. So that's it there we do have them on our online store and in the shop as well if you want to come in and check them out so uh power wise so what did we make um we didn't do a before run on this one but this made 303 kilowatts at the hubs 515 newton meters so really good off the bottom nice and clean off the bottom which is good but this is where the other six manifold really shines you know so now as a good upgrade the customer can put that on and he's going to see more power straight away um, but either way, it's going to feel really good from where it was. So what camshaft did we use? We chose to use the Swiss Army knife of all cams that we do use, which is the Crow Cams 1249. And that's a 226, 232, and it's just over 600 there lift on a 112 lobe set. So we get a few people talking to us about lobe set. What is it? What's the difference? You know, why do you use a 114? Why do you use a 112 and 110 and so on? Um, in the early days, we did a lot of experimenting with 110 lobe steps with a very similar camshaft, and it worked really well. Um, it's got a real, real tight idle, and that's just the way, obviously, with the, as you get smaller in the lobe separation, the idle becomes quite fast and racy. Um, but as you go wider in the lobe step, you can sort of hear them sort of go do doom, do doom, do doom, as opposed to going do 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 do. So it's a very simple way of me just giving you a general idea of it. There is a lot more technical term into the lobe separation and how the inlet and exhaust work. Um, it basically closes the window up between the inlet and exhaust cam as to how quick the gap is between it. So um, I can completely make this a lot more technical than it needs to be, but for the general guy out there who just doesn't quite understand a camshaft, that's the general sort of thing to think of. So if you're looking for a camshaft that you like it sitting there sort of going doom, do doom, do doom. You know that's more like a 114, 115 lobe set, um, and commonly you'll see a bigger lobe set in in a you know supercharged or a turbocharged application. So, um, and then you'll see you know numbers of like plus three and plus four and so on in front of it. So, um, I am going to do a more technical video on that one, and I'm probably going to get some of the guys who actually grind the cams to get on board and, and actually do a bit more of a one on one with that. So it'll be, that'd be a good video to do. So, but anyway. Um, thought I'd just do a nice little video on the, an old VT. It's these things, uh, yeah, we don't really see many of these anymore, so it's, it's, it's good to have one in. So it's come up really good. I'm happy with it. Customer's going to be happy with it. 
So, but anyway, guys, thanks. See you on the next one. Catch ya.